You also came on and made a great call about some upcoming inflation numbers and what it would do to the S&P. What, do you, what, what, is your, what do you see your expertise as now in terms of stock market predictions? Will you do a week? Will you do a day? Will you, do you do these, uh, these ex, uh, options that expire in like eight hours? Do you do those or can we stick with six months in one year? What would you rather do today? I'd rather stick with six months to one year, Joe. Okay. Tell me what's going to happen then. Uh, well, I think 2024 is going to ultimately be a good year for stocks because we've got a Fed that's no longer fighting an inflation war. And we know that uh, the ISM manufacturing, these PMIs are bottoming, and that's correlated with earnings beginning to accelerate. And we know there's pent-up CapEx. You know, capital spending has been sort of held back for the past few years. So that accelerates. That's good for earnings. And we expect mortgage rates to fall, which would be good for consumers. So it's really going to be a, a good year for stocks. But the caveat being the first six months, probably a little more challenging because in the first six months, investors are going to be a little itchy or anxious for the Fed to do their first cut. And that uncertainty is going to weigh on stocks. And at the same time, it's going to bring back those who are fearful inflation rears up. So I think it's a good year overall, but most of the gains come in the second half. Yeah, it, this is a simple case of uh, consolidating some of the, the, the outsized gains we saw at, at the end of last year. Yes, and as, as we all know, whenever you have a parabolic move, in, and the move from October to December was basically parabolic, you, you need to consolidate. In fact, you might even have to decline a bit. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we have the market down, you know, as much as 5% by March, but that's really going to end up being a pullback you want to buy because, uh, I mean, we're not having a hard landing. I mean, the only re risk to our view would be if we have a recession. The, uh, so that would be the risk, which you think is 20%, 30%, what, what, what is the risk of recession in your view? I, I mean, I think it's low. I mean, in a typical year, the odds of a recession is 20%. Um, I think it's it's probably around 20 percent, maybe, maybe even less, because I think what investors have priced in is greater than a 20 percent recession. As you know, there's still many people skeptical, thinking the only way that a Fed cycle ends is with a recession. So many think you're going to have a recession this year because of the yield curve. I, I think those have been very costly for investors because people have been overly cautious. But yeah, so I think the recession odds are low. We don't have the uh, companies don't have the the revenue boost from raising prices or probably won't anymore. So I, I don't what is your earnings picture for for gains in 2024? Is it 10 percent on the S&P? Yeah, it's a uh, well, pricing power in sort of greedflation. I mean, only really a handful of companies really did that. Many of those were consumer product companies and staples, and they're the ones that have been suffering uh, recently. Y you know, unit demand, I think, is one of the stories that will emerge because as soon as we have lower interest rates, demand for housing is going to improve. That's so, you know, there's a huge multiplier effect to GDP from housing activity. So I think you're going to see the cyclical part of the economy really pick up. Do you, Tom, uh do you forecast at this point that that will be disappointed from the the absolute number of, of Fed rate cuts next year? And will that be OK if we don't get whatever it is that that the market's anticipating a you know, six or seven? Is that is that OK? And if we do get it, what does that say about the economy? Uh, I know that's the debate, Joe, with the, with investors. And to me, the number of cuts isn't going to be as important is how the bond market reacts to the trend in inflation this year. And, you know, we think inflation's still on a glide path much lower than consensus. So I do think we're going to approach target before year end, uh, before the year in 2024. Maybe, you know, this December one could be a little bumpier than expected. Um, but it's, if, if that's, in fact, the path, like inflation's weaker, I think interest rates, especially on the long term, are going to fall more than expected. And so it's going to be less about how many cuts the Fed does, and it's going to be whether or not the Fed also recognizes that. So to me, stocks are going to take their cue from the bond market more than what the Fed actually does. So you don't think the last mile is going to be 
an issue with because of wage gains or whatever. You think we'll get to the Fed will get to two percent? People said we're never getting to two percent again. You don't think it's a new normal? You think we go back to where we were for for such a long uh, a long period of time? There's there's nothing structural that's now in there. It was all supply chain disruptions. You know, probably the best clue to this is the fact that. We just got a consumer inflation expectations from the New York Fed survey earlier this week, and inflation expectations are back to pre-pandemic. So if consumers aren't expecting inflation to reaccelerate, and housing and cars, which has essentially been 86% of the change in inflation, if those are normalizing, and housing doesn't have to be negative, it just has to grow at 3%. And as you know, used cars could fall you know, like as much as 30% next year in the next 12 months, uh, you don't really have much behind inflation. So uh, I, I'd be surprised. So it was transitory. That's yeah. What you're, that's yeah. What, yeah, that's what you're saying. It was transitory all along. It was, yeah. it wasn't, it was, it is, it wasn't it. So now we decided we're back to that. Okay, so yeah. just to, to end on, give me your, um, your one year and five year price target for Bitcoin. Uh, I think in the next... 12 months, uh, something over 100,000, you know, maybe 150,000. And, you know, in the next five years, again, it's, you know, it's a, there's a finite supply. And now we have a, a potentially huge increase in demand with a spot Bitcoin approval. So I think in five years, you, you know, something around half a million would be potentially achievable. 